Southern Ijo Local Government of my office. Grandmaster is my personal brother. But today, I am here with this big team to represent the federal government of this great country. Before I deliver my message, I want on behalf of the entire job to thank people like you for highlighting the plight of our people to the world. Yes, a lot of people have called you names. A lot of interpretation has been given to the cause we have been fighting. We're singing a song. See, Niger Delta Freedom Fighters, one more river to cross. What is that river? When I heard the song, I asked myself, what is the river that is left? It's our ability to transform from where we are to a peaceful resolution. As a son of this soil, I want to tell you that today in Nigeria, the president of the country, his disposition, his thinking, his attitude gives me as a job man hope that at least he's sincere. I have watched him from the campaign stage till today. He made it an article of faith. He committed himself to the, both the international community and the entire Nigerian population that one of the cardinal things he wants to address is the Niger Delta issue. All of you are aware. He has sent so many embassies. He has reached out to our people. He has been talking to our people through various means, including this. A problem that has lasted is older than most of us here. Our problem started right from the colonial days. When we were heading towards independence, the Njo people insisted, with other minorities in the South, insisted that they, wanted, they didn't want to be part of the Nigerian state. That was why we had a Willis Commission. From that point, at least they appeased us and we decided to be part of the Nigerian Federation. But it got out of hand when finally oil was struck in our land. You can imagine the time this problem started to date. It's been quite a long time. So there is no way we can find solution in one day. So the president says I should tell you that we are feeling that you should give us two things. One, let us have peace within this period and see what we could do. Two, give us time, let us rebuild the infrastructure and change this environment for the good of all of us. As we go on, we will listen to the basic problems we have outside the general Niger Delta problem. Senator Brigidi, first of all, let me ask you. You are no longer a senator. Um, you did not run an election and lose it. For some reason, your party chose to deselect you. So how come after such a, what must have been a traumatic political experience for you, you are still ready to serve this party, this government, in such a sensitive post. What informs this decision on your part? Basically, I think that as a, a young and upcoming politician, the offer to serve, whenever it's given to you, you should be able to honor it. When our people need all sorts of help. Our people need some form of direction. Our people need the government more than ever in their history now. So it's imperative that when you are giving such a responsibility for a young man from that environment, it's important that I offer my own little support and service to the people of the area. So serving this government, after all, I'm, I'm still a PDP member. I've not left the party. Whatever have, might have happened in the process of election area, this bygone. But the fact is that I am a PDP member, and I owe it as a duty to my party to make sure that it succeeds. And one of the critical issues that are confronting the party and the government today is the Niger Delta question. So it's important that I also, if the government deem it necessary, find me, me worthy enough to be invited to run such an uh, important assignment. I think there's nothing, I don't see any reason why I should not accept that challenge. Okay, what was the situation when you came in? What informed the setting up of that committee? Well, basically, by the time the government was inaugurated, it was almost impossible to do anything within the Niger Delta region, particularly within the states of Delta, Bayelsa, and Ramos. The, insurgency, the level of insurgency has reached an alarming proportion. Kidnappings of expatriates, blowing up of oil installations and facilities was the predominant feature within the region. It therefore became imperative for the government to do something urgently. 
one way to go is that everybody else advocating that look military solution may never may not be the right one. Therefore, try the process of dialogue. Over the years, there have been all these military skirmishes trying to quell, quell insurgency in the region. It has not really given us any results. So the government decision to provide for this committee was based on this, the previous experience. And secondly, the necessity for the creating a, a more conducive atmosphere for a dialogue. So I felt that it's important that we raise some of them. On our own, we have talked about a couple of them, the areas that will be coming. We think that, at the committee level, we think that the issue with this SSG, if it suits His Excellency, we should be able to get some of the enjoy elders to come in. The program is this. By the time government came in, there was insurgency. There's total breakdown of law and order, and there was high level of insecurity within the region. So first things first, let's get these people to agree to talk. Then we say, okay, what are the critical issues you want government to address so that we will be able to have peace and re return the place to normalcy? That bit we have done. We've been able to identify the critical issues fundamentally. The eight decades of neglect has been a critical factor in the development of insurgency and militancy in the entire region. But today, my duty is simple. My duty is to introduce our own son, the distinguished senator, who happened to be national chairman of the Niger Delta of the State of the State of the year with other distinguished members of the National From that point, at least they appeased us and we decided to be part of the Nigerian Federation. But it got out of hand when finally oil was struck in our land. You can imagine the time this problem started to date. It's been quite a long time. So there is no way we can find a solution in one day. Sí.